friends, it's Natalie. So glad you stopped by to hang out with me today while I go through this little collection of stuff that I put together for my kids' Christmas gifts this year. If you're new here, I have three kids, a five-year-old little girl, twin eight-year-old boys, and their interests are in sort of a broad range, but also pretty typical for their ages. And so I hope if you're looking for some inspiration and ideas for kids' presents for Christmas, if you've got some kiddos in your life, that this video is helpful. You'll notice that I take kind of a more minimal and intentional approach to things. And I have this little jingle that I say in my head throughout the year as I'm sort of putting that list together of stuff that I want to give my kids for Christmas. Um, it's kind of like the whole something they want, something they need, something to wear, something to read. That's a popular one that you'll hear going around. I do something a little different than that. I kind of made it up for my own kids and what works best for them. And I'm going to share that with you in today's video, along with some encouragement that you don't need to go all out. You don't need to blow a ton of money in order to make your kids happy. You can even shop at the thrift store. I actually have some thrifted finds here um, to give your kids some fun gifts. I mean, it's not all about the gifts right? As Christians, for us, Christmas is about celebrating the birth of Jesus. And one of the ways that we do that is by being generous to our loved ones. And this is what I got my kids for Christmas this year. Okay, so that little jingle that I say in my head to help me keep track and to stay pretty intentional about what I'm getting my kids is something that they asked for, something that is a surprise, something to read, and something for their mind. And I'm gonna show you what I got for my kids in each one of those four categories, starting with the first one, something that they asked for. And this just basically ensures me that I'm getting them something that they want. And it also really gives us, especially as the kids have gotten older, it's given us a great opportunity to set expectations expectations for what it's going to look like under the Christmas tree, not giving away everything that they're going to get, but allowing them to have some desires and wants and be able to express that to get a good idea of things that they're interested in. And then to know that when I go out and get that, it's going to be something that's really cool for them to be able to open up on Christmas morning. So for my boys, this will come as no surprise to those of you who know them. They are Minecraft and Lego lovers. So Judah, uh, my son, specifically, he saw this in his Lego magazine. He gets it every couple of months. Actually, each one of my kids enjoys Legos and they get a little magazine subscription, which is free, by the way. I'll leave information for that in the description box if you guys wanna sign your kids up for the Lego magazine. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun and they actually saw, Judah saw this, it's the Minecraft, what is this called? He called it the Ice Castle. What's the real, the Ice Castle. He was, he was right. He can read. It has some of the fun characters. They play the video game. I play the video game with them. I actually was the one who introduced them to Minecraft. It's so much fun. It's a big part of our lives and our family culture. And so I got this one for Judah. He is going to be thrilled about this, much like his twin brother, Liam, also enjoys Minecraft, but he was very specific in wanting something Minecraft Dungeons, which this is something that I actually thrifted. Does eBay count as thrifting? Um, because I got this off of eBay. I think eBay is thrifting because it's secondhand. Um, and it was one of those decommissioned, it's one of those sets that they don't actually make anymore, but it's the one that he wanted. I was so excited to find this one. This is the Redstone Battle from Minecraft Dungeons, um, which is like another Minecraft video game that my kids really enjoy. So Liam, he's gonna be really excited about this. And then just a couple of weeks ago, actually, my daughter and I were walking through Target and uh, we, we rarely do this, but we had to walk down the toy aisle because a cousin was having a birthday. We needed to pick something out for them. And she saw and fell in love with this beautiful doll. This is from their Our Generation um, line of dolls, which is kind of like a dupe, but not really if you're like a American girl purist, kind of like I am. But Haley's not quite to the age of being fastidious, uh, responsible enough to take care of a more expensive, you know, 18 inch doll, the hair and everything and the limbs. But she just absolutely loved this doll when she saw it. This doll's name is Raya. Rhea. Um, Haley always renames her dolls, so I don't know if she'll stick with that, but she just loved 
this ballet outfit. She said, oh my gosh, her brown eyes are so gorgeous. And so I thought, okay. I literally took a picture of it when I was in the aisle so that I would remember, remember the exact one that she was like, she was literally standing there. She could have been like a heart eye emoji, just like, <gasps> and there were tons of other dolls around her, but this was the one. And those three items are the something they asked for category. Let's move on to something that's a surprise. I'm a minimalist, but I don't do just like wooden toys for my kids or like handmade uh, sad beige toys for sad beige children, Werner Herzog sort of situation. We are not afraid to have Legos and plastic and <laughs> more mainstream toys in our house. I just like to keep it more simple. Um, one of the plastic toys that my kids have been loving, all three of them have, but especially the boys, they have found this new love for Nerf. Weston actually just recently got some Halo video game Nerf blaster gun extraordinaire and it's like fully automatic and it takes batteries and lights up and that was an investment. But my boys actually saw this and they asked for this as one of the things that they asked for for their birthday. This is the Nerf Minecraft saber wing. It's kind of like a bow, like a bow and arrow sort of setup. I haven't gotten it out, so I haven't actually seen it in action. Um, we ended up getting them something else for their birthday and my kids know if they make a request and they ask for two or three things, they might get one or two of them. Um, and so this is something that I actually got for them at Fred Meyer back when it was their birthday, but I pulled it out of the mix because it was gonna be a little bit too much to have that and everything. Don't be afraid to do that. If you get everything sort of like wrapped up and under the tree and you realize, you know what? If I pulled this one gift out, that might just kind of balance it out, even it out. Maybe having one more thing under there would kind of tip the scales and it would be a little bit overboard for your family or your kids and how overwhelmed that they would feel. And um, that's sort of the situation that I was in with this Saberwing Minecraft dealio but it's perfect to surprise my boys with for christmas i do have a second minecraft nerf blaster that is in the back of my suv that weston just drove out with with the kids i text him to say i uh, might want to throw the outdoor blanket over the thing that i forgot to get out of the back of the suv i picked it up at fred meyer the other day um, and it's not here to show you. So I'm so sorry about that. I will insert B-roll so you can see exactly what it is that I got them. Um, but they're each gonna get a Nerf blaster. It's going to be a surprise for them. They, they don't think that they're getting one of these. So that's a fun way to sort of add a little bit of magic and delight to what I wrap under the tree. Um, the, the surprise for Haley. Like I mentioned before, Haley, my five-year-old little girl, actually really loves Lego. And at some times, she's actually enjoyed it and played with it more consistently than even my boys have. So I thought that she would be thrilled about this Lego City. This is called Farmer's Market Van. Look at how cute that is. I can't wait to play this with her. I loved Legos as a kid and um, I would have loved this set. It even has like this little like hand pump well that water comes out of. Haley is going to love this and she will be surprised because this isn't something that she asked for. I don't even know if she knows it exists, but when she opens it up, she's gonna be pretty happy about it. Okay, moving on to the next category that I use to sort of direct my purchasing and that is the something to read category. And this is another um, sort of category that's actually easy to thrift. So just keep that in mind um, if you are looking for books. This one I did not thrift, I got this off of Amazon. My kids love encyclopedias and like kids reference books. We have a human body book. We have a encyclopedia of animals book. DK is a really great brand. This brand DK, which is this book. I'll show you that in a second. Um, this is the Britannica encyclopedia for kids. It is, I mean, hefty. This is a big book. And I know their eyes are just gonna light up when they see this. My boys especially have just been obsessed with books like these and this one is huge. They're gonna look through all these pictures, there's history, there's science, there's all sorts of fun stuff all in one book. This is the DK Smithsonian Children's Illustrated Atlas. My boys have actually been really interested in geography lately. 
they're always asking like, how many miles is it to this or that? Or what country makes the most coffee? This has North America and the United States and then other countries and continents and fun facts and stuff that is like really kid friendly for them to be able to read. The reviews on both of these books were really, really good. So they are going to be very happy about that. That's probably not the sort of thing that they will just dive right into and start playing with on Christmas morning, but it's one of those uh, gifts that has more longevity. That is something that they're going to be looking through and referencing and learning from and enjoying for weeks and months and even years after Christmas is over, where some of these other items, they're more of like a instant gratification sort of thing, which is not bad, it's okay. Um, but that's why I kind of balance that toy aspect with more of like the learning and hands-on and like doing stuff. The book that I got for my daughter, this is the thrifted one. These I Spy books I don't think are in print anymore, so I think you can only actually thrift them. I thrifted another one of these. She loves it. It's actually the Christmas version, the Christmas I Spy book from the 90s, and I put that in their December box last year. I'll share more with you about the December box in a little bit, um, but she specifically asked, Mom, I would love another I Spy book for Christmas because she has found all of the things to spy in the Christmas one. So I got this year round challenger and it has like different seasons and stuff. Apparently this book used to belong to a little girl named Nicole. Or maybe she's not a little girl, maybe she's an adult and really enjoyed I Spy like I do as an adult. So Haley has really enjoyed these and I think she's gonna enjoy this one as well. So that's what I got for Haley in the something to read category. <laughs> Set things off the bench here. I'm sitting on my piano bench and apparently my butt is wider than I thought. Such is life. Okay, the next category is the something for their minds. So this is uh, an activity set, a craft, a hobby, something for them to get their hands on, maybe learn a new skill. I've done stuff for like STEM or STEAM. We've done like KiwiCo boxes to sort of fulfill this category. This year, I purchased some things from Klutz Crafts, which is such a throwback. I used to love Klutz Craft Kits when I was like a tween, teen, early teenager. Um, and for Liam specifically, and it's actually something he did ask for, so there is crossover in these categories sometimes, especially considering the fact that books are also for our minds, but that's just the way that I keep track of things. Liam has been so interested in like science experiments and kits and stuff like that. I realize that these are less experiments and more like demonstrations, but let's not split hairs over it. And this is from the Klutz brand. This is the make your own discovery bottles. Liam is a very sensory oriented kid. And so this is something that I think he will absolutely love, not just doing the activity or the little craft, but also being able to play with the four little sensory bottles that you can make with this kit. And then I also got him this Biochem Creatures 10 plus experiments with chemical reactions. You can grow six test tube slime balls. <laughs> Liam will so love this. He will flip over this. So there's all sorts of like stickers and different activities. There's a book that comes with it. He's going to love that. The interest that Judah has had is art and drawing. This has been a newfound love of his. We always have like little drawing and art supplies and stuff like that for the kids with our homeschooling and sort of like little craft area that we have, but he specifically has been asking to learn more. Like he said, mom, could we look up a video like on YouTube of how to draw this? And he's very interested in it. Art Hub for Kids side note, is a great channel for kids learning how to draw like very simple drawings. That is a great resource, so entertaining, so encouraging, um, and he's just really, really enjoyed this. So I got this Klutz book. It's Start with a Scribble, Drawing for the Artistically Undiscovered. <laughs> how cute of a title is that? And it's just sort of a step-by-step. -step. They have spots for you to draw in the book as well as grab your own sketchbook and draw. And then to go along with that, I picked up this art box kit. It has a little handle on it. It's covered in plastic right now. Um, but it comes with crayons, oil pastels, markers, colored pencils, watercolor cakes, glue, paintbrush, palette, sketch pencil, eraser, etc. It's just sort of that like beginner's kit uh, for kids of art stuff and then 
together with the book. I think that makes a nice little set for him to draw and learn art to his heart's content and we can do this together. The idea for like the something with their minds category that I've made here is stuff that we can do together. So I don't always wanna play Legos or dolls. I don't always wanna get into a Nerf gun war. Like I enjoy doing those things with my kids, but I really enjoy pursuing hobbies and interests with them most of all. So like the little science stuff with Liam, that's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to learning more about art and drawing with Judah. And then something that Haley's been super interested in lately because she was getting a little curious and a little snoopy in my office a couple months ago and she got into my sewing kit, like my sewing kit. I have my sewing machine in there. Thankfully, she didn't hurt herself on anything sharp, but she has been asking nonstop, mom, please teach me how to sew. Please teach me how to crochet or knit. So Klutz came in clutch. Is that cheesy? That's so cheesy. This is actually Klutz Jr ages four plus, this is their My Simple Sewing Kit. And it comes with little felt um, shapes and yarn and a thicker needle to like really establish those skills of different stitches and stuff like that. I think my sister had something like this. My younger sister had something like this when she was little. This looks very familiar. Um, and then to go along with that, I got her this little sewing kit. I actually got this from a local shop I believe something like this is sold on Amazon, if not this very thing. Sometimes those local businesses or, you know, shop small. When you're shopping small, you're literally just buying stuff that they bought off of Amazon and then marked up. But I'm happy to shop small. I would honestly rather support them. So I picked up this for Haley and we can have some of her supplies. I think this actually comes with real needles and stuff. So I'll have to go through it just to make sure that I'm not just letting her loose with needles and scissors and stick pins. I think she will love this so much. So those are the items from the four categories that I use as sort of a guideline for myself of things that are getting wrapped up and put under the tree for Christmas morning. But you might be wondering about stockings. So I've actually talked about stockings here as a subject in one of my videos and like how I go about stuffing stockings, doing it really budget friendly, how I cut down on like the clutter and the junk entering our house because stockings can sort of be a, a breeding ground for that sort of thing. So I will link a video below for you guys where I went more in depth with that. Um, and then also a blog post that kind of goes along with it if you'd like to see those tips and tricks in written form. But I'll quickly just highlight a couple of those now because I think it's pertinent with what I just showed you that I'm wrapping up for gifts to open up under the Christmas tree. So one of the ways I like to stuff a stocking is with something that coordinates with something that they are getting under the tree, which it doesn't always work out this way, but I decided to do this for Haley. So she's gonna open Miss Raya here. And then in her stocking, I'm actually going to break up this set and put these little pieces, this uh, ballet outfit with shoes and tights and a tutu and a leotard. I'm gonna put these pieces not in this box, but broken up into and throughout her stocking. Okay, so sort of along the same lines as having something coordinating in their stocking with something that's under the tree is what I did for my boys this year. I got this two pack of these little palm drones, which you just turn them on and you hold them in your palm and you kind of push it up and it flies into the sky. We used to have one of these years ago and it was so much fun. And this actually coordinates with their Nerf blasters. And I saw this video, it looked like so much fun, where they had these little hand drones, they'd put them up into the sky and then they'd grab their Nerf blasters and shoot at the drones. And it's kind of like a way to do target practice without having to do it on your brother. I'm all for some healthy competition, but with two boys, <laughs> things can get out of hand, especially when you throw Weston in the mix and he gets his elite nerf thing out. But I thought that this would be fun. I think they're gonna be pretty happy to see those in their stocking along with treats. Um, I do a lot of consumables in stockings. That way it fills it up, but it doesn't like fill up our house. Uh, they just like eat the Pringles and I put an orange in the toe of their stocking or I get them like little craft sets. I used to do like little um, coloring sets and stuff. They're a little old for that now. If you have younger ones, that's a fun way to do it. And then sometimes I will get these boxes. These are like retail boxes. You can find these on eBay of surprise packs. I think sometimes they're called blind bags where you don't know which character like Lego minifigure. These are little Minecraft squishies. I'll just put one of these packs, which you can't see what's in it. It's a surprise when you open it up. And 
that's always a little thrill for them. This will be the third year that we are putting these in stockings. So this has definitely been the gift that keeps on giving. And then another thing that I'll break up, I picked up this Play-Doh set. I've had this on hand. I got this at Fred Meyer. Um, and I will just put these little Play-Doh pots in their stockings and then I'll probably just hide this little uh, tool set that comes with it in the drawer that we have for kinetic sand and sensory stuff and Play-Doh and stuff like that. So they have like this little surprise waiting for them that wasn't wrapped. They'll probably discover it like days after Christmas and it'll just be a fun little extra thing. And a lot of the times sets like these are only just a little bit more expensive than if you bought like a pack of just the Play-Doh. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And that just about does it for stuff that I've gotten this year that's new for stockings. Um, I put little uh, stuffed animals in their stockings that we've had for years and years. So that's not something that I need to repurchase or a new thing to bring into the house. I'm always trying to be conscious because I've done so much decluttering and so much organizing and reorganizing and learning about simplifying one of those like Achilles heel areas in our house is the stuff that we get for our kids and we've actually learned that they are happier with more order and less stuff and the ability to just have the freedom to play and not get overwhelmed with like the pile. I have one more thing to talk about with you guys and that is our December box. I mentioned it earlier in this video and promised that I would share a little bit about it. So really quickly, and this is something that I've shared in years past, our December box is something that we fill up and give our kids on December 1st or like the weekend of December 1st. We put our star on our Christmas tree, we get the December box out and that is an opportunity for us to give them just a couple of things that they can enjoy throughout the Christmas season leading up to Christmas. Actually, most of what is in the box is stuff that we have had for years. Little Christmas themed stuffed animals. We have our Christmas mugs that we have cocoa in. Much like how I do stockings, there's a lot of consumables. So I'll put packs of microwave popcorn. I'll do packs of instant cocoa, a couple of fun little snacks and candy items. And this is sort of like our little pack that we get to enjoy and cozy up with and maybe watch a Christmas movie. And something that I put in it every year is their Christmas pajamas. This is something that my kids still really look forward to. And I am taking advantage of that and I'm enjoying it while it lasts because I feel like my boys are right on the horizon of not caring. The day that they don't want to wear Christmas jammies is going to be a sad day for me, but I want them to want to do it. And this year they want to. So I got uh, these, I shopped the uh, Christmas, like the pre-Christmas, I think this was like back in September or October. They released their new Christmas patterns and I got this really cute charcoal gray one with like this light pattern on it. It's super, super cute. So I got the boys their size, which now that I'm looking at this, this might be a little too small for them. We shall see. These are supposed to be a little bit snug. Um, and then I got Haley her size, just the two piece kid set. They also come in adult sizes and baby sizes. I think you can even get ones for your pets, which speaking of pets, we have a couple kitties and I got them a couple of things for Christmas, but I'm sharing that over on my Instagram today. So follow me over there. I'm at Natalie Bennett vlogs. Link is in the description box. If you want to see what I got my cats for Christmas, I can't even believe I'm saying that. The only other things that I got for our December box this year, I actually thrifted this. I don't know if it's from this year or a year past. We've done this before. This is the Lego City Lego Advent Calendar. The box here, it's kind of beat up. My kids will not care. In fact, I think I'm going to take the box that's on the inside and pull it out and put it in our December box. So that's fun. And that's something like, it's an advent calendar, so you don't wait until Christmas to give it to them. That's one of those things that I like to give to them at the beginning of the month so that we can enjoy it together throughout the month. Also this Christmas in the Big Woods, my first little house book. Even my big boys love these books. Whenever we have like read aloud time and I say, okay, pick out a book. 
they almost always grab one of the My First Little House books, and I love that so much. So I picked up this one for us to enjoy during the Christmas season this year. And that, as well, is going in their December box. So I only bought a couple of things, and the rest, like I said, is that stuff like Christmas mugs and other fun stuff or consumables that is kind of already in the box and I didn't really have to repurchase. I've even grabbed like the bag, the stash of Halloween candy that I hide from them, um, and I'll throw a few pieces of that in there. It doesn't have to be big. It does not have to be extravagant or expensive. You don't have to get your kids just toys, but then you don't also have to get them just like books and more of the boring stuff. I have really just enjoyed um, and have had a lot of stress relieved by taking that pressure off of myself to give them more, more, more. Honestly, less is more for my kids and for many kids. Every kid is a little bit different, so I'll let you be the judge of that. Everyone has different budgets and different lifestyles. We don't have a ton of storage space in our house, and my kids, because they deal with some neurodivergent tendencies and sensory overload, we deal with a lot of that. I honestly feel like this is such a great balance. I have never been more excited to give my kids gifts for Christmas this year. I'm feeling very solid and at peace and very good about this. I feel like this enhances the holiday for them without taking over and like having gifts be the focus. And I'm excited to see their sweet little faces as they open these gifts and have something that maybe they were expecting, something that's a surprise, something that they can read later on, and an activity or like a hobby craft that we can do as the days and weeks and months go on. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for coming along with me while, I mean, I do this pretty much for myself as much as I do for you guys, because it's great to see everything laid out in front of me. I'm so glad Weston was able to take the kids out. I was able to show everything to you guys, see it for myself, really take stock of what we have. There's nothing here that I need except for that one Minecraft Nerf blaster that's in the back of the SUV that I hope makes it home without getting spoiled. My kids have gotten snoopy in the last couple of years, so I would love it if you would send me your best tips and tricks for hiding gifts from your kids. And let me know in the comments what you got your kids for Christmas this year, big or small, expensive, thrifted. It doesn't matter. We love our kids. We want the best for them. That's all that matters, right? So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for spending a little part of your day here with me on my channel. Happy holidays, and I'll catch you later.